Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Addison, whatever time you're listening, and thank you for joining us for our ASD Chat for All podcast. We have lots of fun and exciting things on the horizon for Addison School District 4, and this podcast allows us the opportunity to connect with our parents and guardians, families, and community to celebrate our students, their accomplishments, and so much more. Your hosts for this podcast are ASD4 Superintendent Dr. Nick Sutton and myself, Dean Constantopoulos. You interested in hearing more about what's going on in District 4? Come on in and have a chat. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you again for joining us for another episode of our ASD Chat for All podcast. My name is Dean Constantopoulos. I'll be one of your hosts this afternoon, and I'm joined with my co-host, Dr. Nick Sutton. Nick, how are you doing today? I am well. It's 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 nice to, to be in here recording one of these episodes. We were kind of talking beforehand, like we've got no shortage of guests, no shortage of topics, and mm-hmm. both of us enjoy talking. So exactly. it's sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge to find a little time to get one of these going. So mm-hmm. I am a I'm especially excited to be here. Yeah, and you know, we, we've had some cool things going on lately, too. Uh, for example, we just had our second round of the Addison Great Shake, which was amazing. Well said. The, then, oh, uh, the, I was going to say, you know what I'm going to say. The well, An- Innovation Center over at the junior high That's is right. looking as spectacular as ever. So it's it's fun. Yeah. It's a fun fun time to be a part of Addison. Exactly. And lots of stuff to talk about. And in that same vein, we have an awesome guest who we're going to have some great conversations with. Today joining us is Sylvester Bernhardt. He is one of our technology teachers here at Indian Trail. Sylvester, how you doing? I'm doing great today. How about yourself? Doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. So let's just hop right in sure. uh, with the first question. So we know who you are. Okay. But for anybody who's wondering, who are you and how long have you been with the district? Well, my name is Sylvester Bernhardt, and uh, I am one of the other uh, other technology teachers here. Um, and I've been with the district uh, three and a half years so far. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're very happy to have you. Mm-hmm. So I, I always love asking these types of questions because it's like, you know, there's, there's lots of different directions. You can go in public education. So why technology? Why do you teach technology? Why junior high kids? Why aren't you a first grade teacher? Why aren't you teaching twelfth grade calculus? <laughs> you know, so that's it's actually, like, that's yeah, a, that's a really that's a really good question. I actually taught third grade my first year in education. I really didn't know that, and I am uh, I'm I'm intrigued. Okay, yeah. that's a response I didn't expect. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I I taught third grade my first year in education. It was in uh, Wheaton of all places where I live. Oh, cool. And then I woke, I, I, that was a one-year contract to cover a maternity leave. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for another gig. And lo and behold, I woke up at about four and saw this one came up. I applied on it. And I didn't expect because it was for middle school. Mm-hmm. And it was for a technology teacher. And I thought, wow, this is, I love technology because that's my background. I worked for many years for Deutsche Telekom. I'm a career changer. Oh, nice. And um, I thought, wouldn't this be fun? And I went and interviewed and came in and have been here ever since. It's been a guess. Interesting. That's wonderful. You know, it's funny because uh, if anybody has been to, it wasn't this past year, but I believe the year before, for mm-hmm. Science Night. Ah, uh, yes. You know what I'm going to bring up. It's, you yes, did I'm this. infamously famous for <laughs> Science Night Chaos. Aren't yes, I? and the, the graphing song <laughs> that you did. So he did this song about graphing at uh, at Science Night, and that told me right there, I'm like, you definitely would be amazing with the younger kids, yeah, too, because I'm was, sure they ate that stuff up. That was such a curveball because okay. it, was, it was during uh, COVID, and we were doing Science Night virtually. Mm-hmm. And trying to get first and second graders to learn about graphing over Zoom yeah. on a science <laughs> night was, uh, it used all my brain cells that night. I got to tell you, and everybody ate it up. They loved that kind yeah, of stuff. And me personally, I was, I was like, oh man, this is so good. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. You still remember it today. So. I do. I do. And I'm sure I'm not the only one too, which is, well, you know. So that, many people remember that. So. Yeah, it's and you know it makes a big impact when it stays in people's memories like that. So very, that's awesome. Very interesting. So technology was always just a passion, and yeah. then all of a sudden the universe had a plan that, all right, now you're going to teach it, huh? Yeah, it. Um, you know, actually, I'm surprised. I was laughing with my wife about this because this is so parallel to a job I had when I was back in college. Mm-hmm. Um, I so my undergraduate degree is actually in classical music performance. I went to DePaul. I played the viola. I, 
played oh, in many wow. orchestras, the train orchestra at the CSO and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, it's a um, big career change. And then. <laughs> when I when I was in, in school, I had an op- um, There were some traders who did a children's computer project at the Harold Washington Public Library. Mm-hmm. This was back in '93, so computers were still kind of the shiny box that nobody really knew what to do with. And um, we had four of them. Kids would come in an after school, and I thought, wow, this was like the greatest gig in the world, but. I thought, I was talking to my brother about it. He's like, why do you want to be a teacher? You're not going to make any money. He's a developer in Chicago, by the way. Oh, you know, gotcha. Full disclaimer. Um, and I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. You know, come, I'll come work for you. And, and that kind of translated into where going into IT and my path. And mm-hmm. um, I always thought how much I enjoyed being the educator, wherever any role that I ever took. Mm-hmm. And short end of it, I'm working for Deutsche Telekom. I have a friend who I went to music school with. She started a music studio in Oswego, and she said, you're going to be my violin viola teacher. And I laughed and hung up on her. And <laughs> um, so she promptly called me back. And she's like, no, you're, I, need a, I need one. I'm starting it up. And it's just after, you know, after work hours and Saturdays. And I figured out that after you know, 12 hours on the grind of doing anger management and spin control, Mm-hmm. I could feel relaxed and refreshed after teaching some little kid to grind their way through Twinkle Twinkle Little Star yeah. on a violin. My wife looks at me and she's like, you need to change jobs because <laughs> this is something I think you enjoy a lot more. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. Huh. Well, I'm glad you found something that like fulfills the your like the, the, your passions your yeah. interests as well as that need to be in that education room. yeah it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like a job it doesn't feel like work i love that yeah. that's the best that's the, that yeah. is the best so going along this same vein of technology right sure so how do you how would you say technology has changed since you started in the position and then also where do you think you see technology in schools going like how do you see our relationship and the students' relationship with technology changing as we move forward. Would you say in the past few years? Sure. Because um, I know that it changes so quickly like so and so often. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I would say that when I first started in the role, it was more of the mindset of we need to teach them how to interact with uh, business tools that people would be using. Sure. Um, that there's a program on a computer and you need to know how to crunch numbers in Excel and write a document and things like that. And the way I look at how technology is going um, with the advent of artificial intelligence and machine learning and people interacting with their devices fundamentally differently. Right. Then, I mean, nobody would have predicted that the cell phone in 2007, or with a mobile tablet, as I'll call it, would mm-hmm. have impacted culture and society so differently. Oh my Good gosh. point. And, you know, they don't, the kids today, they don't know necessarily a world without it. Mm-hmm. And to ask the genie that is in the, bo- the magic little box what the answer is, it's not necessarily to ask the genie, but it's how to ask the genie the right question to get the information. And the right. way I see AI and the latest iteration of Elon Musk's company, uh, OpenAI, mm-hmm. their chat GPT-3 engine, it's getting more and more like a person. And the morph, the morphing, I don't see education going away, all the basics, mm-hmm. because that's fundamentally important to understanding how to use the technology. Right. Um, and so where you see it going, I see devices just getting smaller. Mm-hmm. I see more, um, if teachers let go of the idea of carrying around a big book to read through, I see kind of education morphing a little bit. And I don't know when or where the public model would disappear or Mm -hmm. evaporate, but I'd have to say that technology definitely will become more a part of it. And I see more effective teachers using it in a way that augments their instruction so that the kids are are getting a little more out of it, I guess I would say. Absolutely. Thank you for that answer. No, I get it. Because it's like, if anything, it's like, Technology as a resource should almost be ubiquitous. You just yeah. use it naturally. It's you not. Never think about we're not doing it. technology mm-hmm. tomorrow. We're not doing a techie lesson. It's Nobody just, thinks about a doorknob. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You just use it. I, I'm, I'm quite intrigued how you're going to answer this last question. Sure. So, pretend you're a parent out there, okay. and it's like, man, my kid has a Chromebook. My kid has a cell phone. Like, technology has positive and negatives. Like, where? Where does that begin and end? Like, how do you advise a parent that's like, you know, I want my child 
and 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 your student to yeah. be able to know how to, you know, chat appropriately, do stuff safely. And so, where does that start, and where does that end, and and where does that filter start, and where does that filter end? If you're if you got a parent that says, you know, I'd really like your opinion. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. As a parent myself, I have an 18 year old, so. I've watched this whole morph morphing of technology being ubiquitous when, you know, uh, in his middle school is when uh, the iPhone really became more prevalent, I mm-hmm. would say. And a lot of people from all demographics don't have a clue as to what to do. I would say that if you would feel comfortable letting your kid just loosen the streets, then that's your prerogative. That's the same thing as the internet you have to have a direct and open line of communication the privacy i don't think i think they're interacting with their technology with technology for instance the social media platforms Mm -hmm. at a very young age and i think a lot of adults don't have that necessarily filtered so i would say it has to be a constant my son and i we have an open transparency contract there is nothing he can't look at on my phone, and there's nothing that I can't look at on his phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm definitely, oh, we have the conversation. In our house, as I share with my students, dinner time is a sacred time. And what that looks like for everybody else is something different. Yeah. But we're, having, we're sitting down and we're looking at each other with no technology around where we're having a direct and open conversation about what we're doing during our day. Yeah. And I think that is where the filter and the discussions, if you have that kind of relationship, everything else just kind of falls into place. <laughs> and because there's so many people that are where you, they'll reach out to you on social media or on on or it's easy to hide behind something Mm -hmm. and you know for me as most parents probably out there eye contact and all that other stuff the social skills are deteriorating in you know neurotypical kids and the kids who are having the challenges who are practicing their social skills are actually more advanced with their skills because they're doing more eye contact more reciprocal body language and that's something that I think we're going to see in our culture and society. I think we're going to see a shift. And I think people are, because this is still the Wild West, and I think we're going to see a shift of parents going, you know, this is something that I don't really believe will add value to our lives. Mm-hmm. And maybe we need to rethink of how we use it. Yeah. So just having thought provoking, man. Seriously. <laughs> it's like having a healthy dose of both the interpersonal and the techno- technological Absolutely. parts of your life. I, I love that. It's Absolutely. seriously a lot to think about. Absolutely. So. I think of myself like a human being, not like the rock or the fire that I use to augment my life, which is what technology is. That is such a good point. So, Inter- yeah. So, question for you. Uh, this has given me a lot to think about. Okay, truly. great. Um, and if, and I'm sure anybody listening would may have questions or mm-hmm. may want to pick your brain a little bit more about this about this idea. So, if anybody yeah. has any questions, they want to reach out to you uh, and learn more about this kind of thing. Absolutely. What's the best way that they can get in contact with you? Either by my email, um, and that's just my my initial last name. I'm easy to find on our school's website. Mm-hmm. You can just email me. Or reach out through the school if you want to just call the school directly and ask to put in contact with me. I'm more than happy to put people into contact with resources that perhaps you feel um, you're not able to find them for your own kid. If your kid wants to learn stuff, that's the other part about technology is is that, and the way we're going is is that there's so much material that is free and Mm -hmm. available because so many people are not going into the field of technology Mm -hmm. that companies like Microsoft and Google and the open source community are just putting out all of their free courses. Harvard and Princeton have free courses that your kid can take today online. Yeah, and you can learn all the same stuff as a college freshman. Harvard put their entire first year computer curriculum online for free. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. All right. So, well, thank you for that. That's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> something else to look at. Dean's got a little homework this week. I know, right? <laughs> I'm so ready. But uh, Dr. Sutton, same question for you. If anybody wants to reach out to you, talk about Great Shake, talk about the new Innovation Center, what's the best mm-hmm. way to reach out to you? Yeah, I, um, you know, just, just like everybody else, uh, school district email and phone, but I, I love Twitter. Mm-hmm. At Dr. Nick Sutton is an easy place to find me. Perfect. Dean, if somebody wants to reach out to you, uh, same question. 
best way for me is going to be Twitter, at AddisonSD4. So, Sylvester, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having Seriously, me. Seriously, an enlightening conversation today. Yeah. It, 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 I, I've got a lot to think about. <laughs> <laughs> and for everybody listening, stay tuned for next time. Thank you for tuning in to our ASD Chat for All podcast. Check us out at www.asd4.org, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts for more. We'll be back soon with another episode, so stay tuned.